uh, was altered according to the judge's ruling because there were no dates set opposite the name. So it was altered uh, to state that uh, these were circulated on the date range June 1 to August 8, 2011, as opposed to it being uh, stating uh, each signer should sign on the date set opposite his or okay. her name. Well, then, then you don't have to really go through any proof and e or evidence that's already been proven and evidence shown at the courthouse, at the courthouse. and Judge Warman has already ruled. ruled. Right. Right. Okay, so then this board can determine what to do next right. with, in that regard. We don't have to revisit all of that testimony. Well, you do have to revisit some of that testimony because Representative Mahoney also testified Here is the altered affidavit, that the, by that the, the way, the, uh, with the June 1. There you can see the June 1. So Representative Mahoney testified that on June 1 of 2011, he turned over the 42 petitions or however many petitions that he had made up. And they, his circulators, he testified then, circulated the petitions presumably between this time period. Between June 1 and August. Yes. Right. He presumably, uh, he, well, he's had with him in the courtroom uh, over a dozen of what he's testified were his circulators. So presumably, on those dates, all of those days, if you have over 42 circulators fanning out, they could be circulating on the same day at the same time. In the, in, not necessarily in the same place in the county of Fayette because that's where these were being circulated, all across the county. It is impossible for Representative Mahoney to have been present to acknowledge anything about the signers, which is what you are supposed to, as a signer of the oath on the affidavit, be attesting to. Okay, but is that, that's where I, I need some Okay, I'll give you some guidance is, there. Is, is when we're talking about nominating petitions for candidacy, that's, forgive me for standing, I, I can't sit very long, i got to go to therapy anyway. But for candidacy purposes, yes. My question is, does this same requirement, uh, is it the same requirement for a referendum uh, as it is for candidacy? And if, if you'd like me to answer well, that, I, I, sure. as we spoke throughout our preparation of the, our referendum summary, is the requirement is the same. So, because the statute actually is the nomination petition okay, statute, so and that's if, why when we didn't have an affidavit of circulator, he was handed a form. So when you see John Doe run for Congress that's been in Cambria County, Allegheny County, Washington County, all on the same day, chances are, unless he's moving at warp speed, he can't do that. He has to have personal, in order to properly sign the affidavit of circulator, you have to have personal knowledge. And that would be a case-by-case -case determination. And it says it right on the, on the form. And now we also turn to the... the nomination of the petition of Flaherty, which was a case, Supreme Court case in Pennsylvania decided in 2001. Uh, there was a relaxed standard that the Commonwealth Court was going off of. Uh, in, in the Mormon ruling, one of the footnotes refers uh, to... Uh, the uh, Flaherty case, and in it, it's uh, basically referring to 2869 and the language in section 9 and line, therefore unambiguously requires that the circulator affirming the petition be aware of five criteria and uh, alliterates the criteria. In order to know this information, it seems clear that the circulator needs to be present when each signer agrees to sign the petition. It goes on to state, we disagree with the relaxed standard. The circulator clearly must be present. Accordingly, based on the criteria listed in 9 and 9, which the circulator must know in order to affirm the petition, we believe that the General Assembly intended that the circulator affirming the petition be present when each elector signs his name to that petition. That is common or Supreme Court case precedent in Pennsylvania. So the requirement is, is that you, to be aware you must be present. That is the requirement. We know that that could not have been the case because no one, as outlined in our complaint, can be in 40 places at once. State Representative Tim Mahoney had more than 40 circulators, as per the Mormon ruling, as it states in the Mormon ruling, that circulated this countywide. It would be impossible to be 40 different places at once. If the argument is that it is possible, uh, we have evidence to the contrary. 
Uh, this, uh, through a right to know law request, we obtained legislative monthly reports from the Office of the Comptroller of the House of Representatives in Pennsylvania. Uh, on it, we have payee Timothy S. Mahoney, and he pays for the printing at 4 29 2011. So he was in Harrisburg? Yes. He was in Harrisburg, a total for the month of June alone, which is the budget month, and it would be understandable that he was in Harrisburg because he sits on the Appropriations Committee, no less than 16 times highlighted on this uh, legislative monthly report. Now, now my and that for July, for which continues over the June month. So for at least 16 days in June alone, he was in Harrisburg on overnight stays, session per diems, overnight stay prior to the session. If one is 200 miles away in Harrisburg, certainly one cannot be in front of petitions being continuously circulated in Fayette County during the same time period. I, I would hope that we could all agree about that. And, and, I, and I would hope that that, 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 law was, that that law was applied because I've seen many a petition where I've seen John Doe being, uh, be the circulator for many, many, many petitions uh, being filed throughout the, throughout the, the, the whole county uh, on the same given day. Mm -hmm. uh, and realistically, that's next to impossible uh, unless uh, you have uh, airfare. Okay, now we also bring in May 17, 2011, primary election day. Because in our uh, complaint of June 20th, we had reason to believe that uh, petitions had been circulating on that day in precincts in Fayette County. So presumably, if, if these were... Uh, Representative Mahoney, as later on August 9th, signing affidavits of circulator, uh, which contain a date range uh, of starting at June 1, uh, well, May 17th is before that, uh, that date uh, for beginning of handing out uh, petitions to be circulated. In addition, uh, Representative Mahoney could not have been in, in several precincts, presumably, uh, on May the 17th, if people were signing uh, outside, presumably outside the 10-foot uh, barrier. However, our, our concern during, uh, at that time, uh, uh, was, was it maybe the 10-foot? The Can I ask you a question, Mr. Sure. Prescott, if I may? Sure, you may. Uh, this is all additional information. Uh, we do not have any, any of this. Would you be able to provide copies? Sure, yes, I will get you copies of this. If you would, please. Right. Yes. Uh, continuing with the timeline at 4.19 p.m., State Representative Tim Mahoney exits the Fayette County Courthouse with what we then thought to be 40 affidavits of circulator. However, we have since learned, uh, learning from uh, Mr. Blosser's office on June 6th when we came down to review the petitions and affidavits, that there were actually eight other affidavits of circulator that were uh, unattached to any petitions and remain so to this very day. The problem with that is, is that we requested uh, for the court case that the Mahoney submission be printed out.